parts of the government that 30 years ago were dedicated to expanding the franchise, Department of Justice and the Supreme Court, right? Under the stimulus of the civil rights movement, those huge entities of this government actually did a great deal of good to expand the franchise. It was never bigger than it was between the 50s and the early 70s. That's a historical fact. Now the Supreme Court and the Department of Justice are working to shrink the electorate, right? If they prosecute uh, any kind of election fraud, it's Democrats they prosecute. They are purging Democrats from voters' rolls. They are pressuring states into uh, refusing to accept provisional ballots. They are pressuring states into putting limitations on registration drives. They are pressuring states into making their registration drives vulnerable to partisan challenges. They are working as hard as they possibly can to shrink the electorate and make it as small as possible. That's step one, okay? Step two is, what do you do with the votes that are cast, <laughs> right? Well, you just do something with the memory cards and the central vote tabulators, right? You do whatever you can do cybernetically, electronically, to flip those numbers. Laugh off the exit polls, do whatever you have to do. They're working on all of this. And Stephen Spoonamore has told us, and he knows who's at work here. He knows the people behind this. He knows what they're up to. He understands the devices they're using. He actually has predicted specifically that they plan to win by 51.8% of the popular vote. We have an expert in computer technology. Uh, we have one of the top experts in the world. Uh, this gentleman's name is Stephen Spoonamore. He is, uh, he is a uh, cybersecurity expert recognized as such by the media. When, when NPR has a program on uh, the hacking of, of Pentagon computers and the vulnerability to hacking, who do they call on? Three national experts, one of whom is Stephen Spoonamore. When they had a program on the problem of computer uh, hacking in, uh, in uh, of business data with uh, people doing business with China, they had three experts, one, of whom, one was from Congress, one was for, former, formerly of the White House, and Stephen Spoonamore. His primary business is, is preventing uh, fraud against banks and credit card companies. But he also consults with the Federal Bureau of Investigation, with the uh, Pentagon, and with the Secret Service. I'm a Republican. I, have, I worked on Giuliani's campaign. I worked on Bloomberg's campaign. I worked on John McCain's campaign. I've been a lifelong member of the party. This is not a Democrat-Republican issue. This is not a partisan issue. This is a democracy issue. If you actually care about a constitutional democracy in which each person votes, that vote is validated, and the people who end up in office are reflected on the basis of the way people voted, you care about this issue. I certainly know that in all the statistical information, it seems that in every single bizarre circumstance where exit data, polling data, or informational data swings, it has all been in favor of Republicans, but not the sort of Republicans who I want to see in office at all. These are people who lie and people who cheat. That is not the conservative way. Conservatives conserve things. We are respectful and we are constitutionally based. You know what the real problem is? People do not want to believe that people want to steal elections in this country. I've done extensive work over the years for voting monitoring overseas. If we had a variance in the exit polling of even 2% from what actually was tabulated, which is exactly how the Orange Revolution came about in Ukraine, we would be in there explaining to people something is wrong. We have had numerous elections in this country now in which where you use Debold election system machines, the, what happens with the vote is way off, 5, 10, as much as 12% from the exit polling and the actual survey. These statistical numbers are impossible. And the problem is Americans do not want to believe that we have people stealing our elections, and they must come to the realization there are people in this country who want to steal elections, and we must stop them. We submitted two affidavits uh, and uh, an argument that uh, the same people who stole 2000, 2004, 
are still in business and are actively engaged in a plan to steal 2008. So uh, they agreed to uh, a consent order uh, that would uh, li lifted the stay for the purpose of conducting uh, one of the key depositions, which is of Michael Connell, who is the chief I, uh, information technology person for both Bush campaigns 2000, 2004, and now the McCain campaign, as well as many other roles, including a role with the state government, uh, the Secretary of State's office in Ohio in 2004, where he designed the website that was hosting the, uh, the counting of the ballots and the publication of the ballot uh, count. Mike was involved in building Ken Blackwell's front end, the web access, the way people would actually access the site. What was supposed to happen is each of the counties would tabulate their vote, those tabulators reporting to the Secretary of State's office to the master tabulator. The master tabulator would then report information to the system Mike designed. So you, it's all gotten there, there. And then if the buffer, meaning so many people want to see the results at once, they're overloaded or nationally, there was an overflow site, which was supposed to be outsourced to this company, Fine Smart Tech, that was supposed to look at it. That's the way it was initially described uh, as happening. Fine. But what appears electronically, and what now increasingly, apparently nobody can find the records of the contracts, what actually happened is the tabulators sent their results to Smart Tech in Chattanooga, who then sent the information on to the Secretary of State, who then put it into my system. Well, back to my conversation about these two computers talking to each other and people can do things with the data in between. If the tabulators with anonymously compiled results are sending their results to Smart Tech, and Smart Tech can change the results and then send them on to the Secretary of State, and ta da, you have the Connolly anomaly. It explains how it happened. He knows personally the principal players in Bush Cheney's uh, conspiracy to subvert our elections through electronic means since 2000, and he has named these principal players. Specifically, he has named a man named Mike Connell. Mike Connell, uh, according to Spoonamore, is Carl Rove's computer guru. This is the guy who has helped Bush Cheney fix election results through computers since Florida 2000 in Ohio in 2004, also in the uh, stolen re-election of Governor Don Siegelman in Alabama in 2002, also in the stolen re-election of Senator Max Cleland in Georgia in 2002. How? Well, basically, they use a kind of architecture that's called man in the middle, and it involves shunting election returns data through a separate computer somewhere else. This is something that computer criminals do all the time with banks. Uh, Spoonamore explains that the man in the middle setup is extremely effective and basically undetectable as a way to change election results. They're called MIMS, called man in the middle. That's the process of attack. We deal with it every day in the credit card space. Somebody will set up a MIM at the end of a mall. All the transmissions coming out of the mall will get intercepted. They'll strip out the credit card information they want. They'll make white cards or fraudulent cards or do card not present charges on the web. But we have to clean it up, find the damn thing, pull it out and go and try and track the guys down. I do it every day for a living. And you want to know something? If people think a voting machine that calls into a tabulator somewhere in the county office is any different than all those cash registers calling into the central processor, it's the same thing. And yes, if you put a man in the middle attack, a computer sitting in the middle to change or capture or manipulate the information, it will do so. Is it possible? Yeah. Is it probable? Of course. You think it it's happen? valuable to be president. There's people out there spending billions trying to become the president. It's valuable. If you can steal it for a couple million bucks, why not? Michael Connell is a key witness because uh, we believe uh, that there's an ongoing uh, conspiracy uh, which rises to the level of a, a corrupt, uh, what's talked about in the Ohio Corrupt Practices Act, which is a series of fraudulent uh, actions. And this has not been reported in the mainstream press, but it's been, a, it's been out there in the blogosphere for over a year. Uh, that Ken Blackwell contracted to have a partisan Republican uh, service host the counting of the votes in Ohio in 2004. And what we've asked for is the architecture map 
or the schematic, the, sy the system systematic uh, explanation of what was the connection between the Secretary of State's computer and this smart tech computer in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Well, in Chattanooga, Tennessee, in this bank building, um, they have the servers for the Bush campaign, to Bush Cheney 2004. They had the uh, Republican National Committee uh, uh, servers uh, and many other servers for you know partisan organizations, partisan campaigns, Republican campaigns. So, just the if, if you say, well, that that doesn't prove that these people just because it's it's in the same building and then in the same computer systems and the same company called Smart Tech uh, that's administering this, that doesn't prove it. Well, but it sure suggests that Ken Blackwell, as a very partisan uh, Secretary of State, is using the power of his office to, to send the data to a partisan entity. Now, the scariest thing is that Connell told Spoonamore that the reason why he has helped Bush Cheney steal these elections for the last eight years is to, been to save the babies. See, we have to understand that there's a very powerful component of religious fanaticism at work in the election fraud uh, conspiracy. The president of Smart Tech is a person named Jeff Averbeck. And Jeff Averbeck has two businesses. One is the, is the Smart Tech, which is this serving, uh, web serving uh, uh, entity. And then the other is some, some kind of an evangelical publishing house. Uh, he is a partisan uh, uh, person. He is uh, connected to the evangelical, uh, you know, the right-wing religious uh, uh, community, uh, and uh, he he is uh, he's partisan. Yeah, uh, a particular kind of partisan. He he's he's you would say with this evangelical connection, he's connected to this uh, right-wing segment, some of which, and perhaps he is included in this mix, um, out of a fanatic, uh, and when I say fanatic, I mean fanatic to the point where you would subordinate other values to pursue this value, right to life, or kill, uh, ending abortion right, rights, or, or choice uh, rights. Uh, upsetting Roe versus Wade, that that becomes uh, so important that you're, uh, you're uh, willing to say, well, we don't, let's suppress those people from voting because they'll, they'll vote Democratic and a Democratic president will appoint a Supreme Court justi justice who will accept that precedent. We need someone who will appoint someone who will vote to overturn that precedent. And suppressing votes is okay, uh, switching votes is okay because of this higher value. Now many of our Christians have what I call the goo-goo syndrome, good government. They want everybody to vote. I don't want everybody to vote. Elections are not won by a majority of people. They never have been from the beginning of our country, and they are not now. As a matter of fact, our leverage in the elections quite candidly goes up as the voting populace goes down. The majority is a majority of unbelievers. They're pro-choice. They're corrupt. They're evil. They don't get it. It's therefore necessary to fix election results in order to prevent the unjust and the unrighteous from taking over. I, I can't make it any clearer than this. You cannot have secure electronic voting. It doesn't exist. There are people out there, and there's a lot of them, who don't really want to win elections. What they want to do is they want to steal them. They have an enormous incentive for power, they have an enormous incentive for money, and they have enormous willingness to go and do it. I don't want to have a society where we're not sure who won. I want to live in a democracy where there's a valid capacity to audit the entire trail. Operatives, if you can't win, you can't lead. If you can't lead, you can't have your way with the USA, if you know what I mean. So, what did I study so we can win, Troy? Computers. As far back as the 1970s and 80s, computer experts came out with warnings that computerized voting machines could be hacked. I came up with a plan. 
a plan to swing elections. The plan was hatched in Texas in the late 1970s. Why? Because that's where I was, raising money for W's daddy, George H.W. Bush, and for the Republican Party. Here's some of our big money friends. Now, why am I pointing out these folks to you? Because they invested in computerized voting machines. Riggable voting machines. The tools of the plan. Here's Ronnie Duggar, founder of the Texas Observer, talking about what he saw going on. First, 16 years ago, the New Yorker informed voters that the DRE system provided the voter no assurance that the vote cast would be counted as cast. It occurred to me recently that perhaps some Texans were reading the New Yorker at that time and instead of being horrified said, aha. Fortunately, we own most of the media, so the Ronnie Duggars of the world with the facts about the stolen elections will never get much play, if at all. And if they do... We call him a conspiracy theorist. Democrat leaders are still adhering to a failed strategy of spite, obstruction, and conspiracy theories. Of course, good old Ronnie Duggar was right. By 2000, all four major voting machine companies are owned by our people. Now, why did we take control of the voting machine market? To hack the vote. Rove is a criminal using criminal methods to cover up, to commit crime and to cover up the crime and to get away with it. And even to this day, as we identify a witness that can really shed light on the entire conspiracy, we have been informed by somebody in the McCain campaign who's an honest person um, that the, uh, that the uh, Rove made, has made a threat against that witness is intimidating witnesses. How could we let someone with this criminal pattern of conduct from, from his college days, where he's rigging a college election for college Republican president, or whatever it was, cheating in every election he's ever been involved with. What, what, how can this go on in this country, which is supposed to have a free press, we're supposed to be critically uh, minded. Uh, it's absurd. I would have fellow Republicans shut me out of meetings, snicker up their sleeves, ha ha ha, in some circles, or oh, you're just being conspiratorial. I go, no, this is what I do, is network assurance. In the last two years, I've been talking to people, I ain't focused on this going, look, this genie, we don't know who's changing the vote now. These weird results are coming in the locals. Everyone's like, I, I don't know what to do about it. And when I bring up the fact that these systems can easily be hacked and demonstratively hacked by sophisticated state actors like China or Israel or Russia, it freezes people in their place. Oh my God, you're right. You've built a vulnerable system and there are many people who would want to exploit that vulnerability. And not all of them have the best interest of our nation at heart. This is a national security threat. It's just absurd. And what is most frightening to me, does anybody really want to step back and say, you know, yeah, the Chinese government, they're the best hackers. They're getting into the Pentagon. Yeah, sure, why not? They should choose the next president. And of course, the explanation is always, you are reducing America's assurance in our voting system. I said, correct, because there is no assurance in this voting system. And like, but people will doubt their vote. I said. They should. It's being stolen. The problem is you think you control this genie, and you don't. You've built a hackable system, and there's hundreds of sharks who all want to hack it. And you will not know who the final hacker was. There are people out there who want to, uh, you know, basically say, don't worry. Uh, electronic voting is fine, we'll take care of it. Uh, don't listen to these people. They're perhaps, hopefully, unknowing tools of a criminal conspiracy. Digital information held inside of a circuit and transmitted through a network is inherently changeable, and because it's anonymous, you cannot validate it. Period. No solution exists. Stop it. So if you are Paper ballots. Uh, hand counted. I know. Only thing that works. The overall strategy of the Obama campaign and and the Democratic National Committee, as I understand it, is not to focus on what we've been talking about, but rather to focus on all the things that bring confidence in the American people that they can vote, their vote votes will be honored and counted, uh, and and their votes will affect the change that is so much needed. Uh, 
So I'm not one of those who disagrees with that strategy for them, but as a nonpartisan person, as a, as a lawyer uh, committed to the rule of law and, and, and the pr preservation of the integrity of the elections, we have to fight uh, against the fraud. And we have to, you know, we have to be uh, pointing out that there are these criminals, that there's this criminal conspiracy that's attempting to undermine the election. They were out there in 2006 and they were overwhelmed. Uh, my personal belief is they will be overwhelmed once again. They are on the run. They are, they are falling apart. It's a criminal conspiracy that's being exposed and will fall apart. People should not be discouraged. People should be uh, confident that our election system, as flawed as it is, if, if people vote uh, reflecting a, a strong consensus, if they vote in enough numbers, it will prevail. And it will be, the rather than a piece of litigation or a piece of investigative reporting, it will be the thing that, that turns the tide and puts this to rest and restores honest elections in the United States. We can depend on ourselves, see? It may seem absolutely impossible to imagine going up against a power so vast, right? It may seem utopian, crazy, but you know, believe it or not, when this nation declared its independence from the largest military power in the world, that seemed impossible too. And at one point it seemed impossible that the slaves could be emancipated and could actually become voting freedmen. That seemed unimaginable. It seemed unimaginable that women, women, chattels, household chattels, that they could be allowed to vote. All these things seemed unimaginable, see? So does this. But we have to imagine it, and we have to do it. We really have no choice. Thank you. Oh!